I have just opened PowerPoint and this is the screen that I have. And what I'm going to do is change the layout of this slide to be blank so that I don't have any of these text boxes in my way. And to do that I'm going to go up top left area of your screen. There's a button that says layout. And I'm going to choose the option that says blank. And now my slide is blank. Alright, so we're going to be talking about shapes. Um, to add a shape to your slide, first we're going to switch to the insert menu, top left corner of your screen, and we're going to choose the icon that says shapes. Now these are the pre-made shapes that PowerPoint has for you, and there are a lot of them. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to use the standard oval, and I'm just going to click and drag and hold down on the button until it's where I want it and then release. You can also resize the shape by using these circles and squares. If you click the circle, hold it down and drag, your shape will be resized. If you click the square and hold it down and drag, your shape will be resized and reshaped as well. So this one's not going to keep your aspect ratio or your proportions depending on where you click. Your shape will look quite a bit different. If you do something you're not happy with, you can always use this undo button in the top left corner. You can rotate your shape by using this green circle. Your cursor will change to a rotating arrow and then you'll just click, hold down, and drag in the direction that you want to rotate. Keep in mind that some other shapes besides the oval actually have slightly different properties. Um, for instance, this crescent shape has a diamond here that's actually called the reshape tool and that allows you to modify certain shapes a little bit more control than some of the more basic ones. So the reshape tool will allow you to make this into a skinnier crescent shape or a thicker crescent shape. If you want to delete a shape off your board, just select it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now you can move the shape around when your cursor changes to this four pointed arrow. That means you can click and drag and move the shape around on your slide. All right, now just like for photos, PowerPoint provides a context menu for the shape when I have it selected. I know that I have it selected because the border of the shape is made of circles and squares. If I don't have it selected, there's no border, there's no menu. So make sure that you click onto the shape and you'll see a menu that says Drawing Tools. You want to click on that. And here are all the options for the shape. In the Drawing Tools menu, I can change pretty much everything. So in the sh with the Shape Fill button here, I can change the color inside. I can change the color outside. I'm going to increase the weight here so it's a little more visible. I can also select from a bunch of pre-made styles. If you click where it says Shape Styles here, you get a huge menu full of pre-made options and there are lots of fills that you can use that are already created for you. Keep in mind that if you select one of these, it is going to override anything you, that you did over here. Now you can also fill a shape with a photo. If you go to Shape Fill up here and then choose the option that says Picture, you'll need to navigate to the photo on your computer. And there you go. Now you are going to, um, PowerPoint is going to automatically insert it in there, so you are going to lose portions of your pictures. And another useful feature is the ability to insert what PowerPoint calls smart art. If you want to use shapes to make a consistent graphic statement throughout your presentation, then smart art is a really good option there. Um, what I'm going to do is insert a new slide so we can look at that. I'm going to go back to the Home tab, and then the New Slide button, and again I'm going to choose Blank. So to insert the Smart Art, we're going to go back to the Insert tab and click the Smart Art icon. 
Now, as you can see, PowerPoint's giving you a lot of preset choices here, so you will need to consider which of these representations is going to be most effective for the content that you're using, the data that you want to show. So it might take you a while to decide, but as soon as you choose which one you want, just click on it and then click OK to insert. Now the Smart Art's going to be centered in your slide, um, but if you want to move it around, move your cursor to the border of the image and make sure that it looks like this four-way arrow and you can click and drag. You can also use the uh, dots in the middle of the border. If you click and drag there that will resize it. You might want to be careful doing that though. It can start looking a little warped. But don't worry, you can always go to your undo button in the top left corner of your screen. So if you just want to move it around, make sure you're hovering over the edge, the border of the smart art. If you click somewhere in the middle and then try to move it, you're going to be manipulating what's inside your smart art and you know not the whole thing. Now, just like with pictures and with shapes, the smart art comes with its own context menu. So if you click on it, if you have it selected, it's going to be in the top right of your screen. In this menu, you can style the smart art that you have. If you click over here where it says Smart Art Styles, it'll let you choose from some pretty cool effects. If you just hover over the options, you don't even have to click, then you'll be able to see a preview of what'll happen. Some of them are 3D, it's pretty interesting. You can also do some more basic styles, like just changing the gradient and, and that kind of thing. You can change the color to customize it. Again, you, all you have to do is hover to get a preview. You don't have to click. You can also, if you change your mind, um, switch the entire layout for something else. And that's over here in the Layouts panel. So here's all the other layouts in this category of SmartArt. Some of them are kind of interesting. They'll give you different options. I'm actually going to select this one so that we can take a look. This one gives you the option to add a picture. All right, so to do that, you're going to click the circle that's got the picture icon in it. And that brings up a dialog box so that you can choose the picture that you want to insert into that shape. So just double click the photo, and there it is. And you can do a different picture for each one. And once you're happy with the way it looks, of course, you can add your text. 